Hello and welcome back for more Discovery Season 5. We're up to the third episode now. Last episode was an interesting one for sure. Lots of interesting uh, character beats, particularly that the, well, the most exciting thing is now that we have Rainer as first officer of Discovery in a weird twist, a uh, weird uh, change of heart. Uh, certainly something that felt out of character for him. He decided to take Burnham's offer and become first officer under her, under her. So that's going to be a very interesting character dynamic between the two of them, I think. That's the thing I, I took away most that I'm most excited for going forward. Um, as far as the plot goes, we got the first piece of five that's going to put together this map following the trail of the Romulan scientist, of course, trying to figure out the progenitor's technology. So I'm interested, of course, to see where that goes. We're going to Trill, and I'm assuming we're going to be planet hopping each episode. So we're going to a planet that is rich with Star Trek lore first. So that, so that should be interesting. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. Previously on Star Trek Discovery. Young Adira has been joined with a Trill symbiote. Welcome to the circle. Once they join with a host, that host has the ability to access the memories of all former hosts. Okay, so... Uh, that's all stuff that I don't know anything about. I didn't watch season three or four, so that character, Adira, who I have seen, obviously, the last two episodes, was a Trill host for that other character that was there that I don't know. Uh, okay, but obviously that's going to be relevant since we're going to Trill in this episode. But yeah, I hope that we elaborate more on that since I'm going to be totally lost otherwise. What are those, like, shards around the ship? They're like... Is that like the, the new space dock? That's what holds it in place, locks it in place? And this is where you say my personal connection to her makes you nervous? Convince me it shouldn't. I mean, he doesn't even really... He doesn't even know her, right? They never met before just because of the connection that her father was his mentor. But he doesn't really... I guess he feels sort of protective of her because of that. Have you tried Vulcan meditation yet? Helped you as a kid. Do you remember every detail anyone's ever told you? It's part of my job. <laughs> I mean, the least he could do is remember some important details about his captain. <laughs> but he'd be hard pressed to do that for uh, some random ensign. We used a decryption algorithm to try and find any coded messages in the language syntax. Right, so there was that poem that was on that weird statue where they got the piece from. Trail facial spots, which are unique to the individual. Wow, that is very specific. So some specific trill is the clue. Captain, the new crew member is here. Okay, I'll meet him in my ready room. Be ready to go in 10. We've got a head start. We need to use it. The new crew member? Is that who I hope it is? <laughs> yep. <laughs> We're about to jump to Trill. And while I'm on the surface, I'll ask for you to do one on ones with the crew. No need, I'd rather follow. I'd like you to connect with them in person. Seems like he would love doing one on one personal icebreakers. <laughs> no shots. He's gonna that's gonna go horribly. Oh here we go, she's doing it now. Lieutenant Ara. Commander Reese, Commander Asha, and Lieutenants Gallo, Linus, and Christopher. I don't even know any. I don't know 75% of those characters. <laughs> so, Rainer, you're probably already doing better than I am. <laughs> I couldn't even memorize the names in the first two seasons of this show. And after two episodes of this season, I'm not going to remember all these new characters. <laughs> Six months of follow chats where we. And pretend like everything's normal and it's obviously not. Do I, um, do I look okay? Please tell me I look okay. You look great, kid. Is, is, so Gray's that character I saw in the recap there, the Trill. Obviously, they're, uh, that's uh, her partner. You were young once. You know what that means. Okay, that's not my business. No. Trouble in Paradise, genius. I do love Tikintaro. She was a great addition in season two. One of the highlights of season two, honestly. A nice, uh, fresh character. Kind of like, well, I was going to say kind of like a Dr. McCoy, but 
that sort of tact, you know, and no bullshit kind of character. Guardian Z, is there a problem? There is. Where does the fourth point? Oh God, some sort of stupid riddle. Just tell her, just give her what she needs. There's so much at stake here. They can't, they don't have time for this crap. The answer is Beta Z. That is correct. Kalzara Bix, she will speak to no outsider unless they answer that riddle. Have others come looking. I won't talk to you until, until you answer this stupid riddle. <laughs> come on. We're better than that, writers. <laughs> Janal joined with our symbiont so that it could carry his secrets across the ages. He requires that you speak with him directly. Are they going to have to put the transfer the symbiote into Burnham? Is that what they're going to do? So Janal can talk through Burnham? Or maybe oh, the join with the dairy here? Since she has once been a Trill host? Overwhelming experience. Captain, Janal can use me. Emotionally overwhelming oh. is what I do best. Hugh's going to do it. I see you. I, I see Hugh. <laughs> Uh. Oh yes, back to the best part of this season so far, Saru and Trina. <laughs> My favorite couple, the galaxy's favorite couple. But I, I am excited for this new challenge, and I will admit, a bit trepidatious. I love their freaking outfits. They're so cool. This is like some of my favorite costume design I've seen in the show easily. Normally I'm complaining about the costume design, admittedly, but these look fantastic. Our engagement announcement. Yeah. I reviewed the draft and... <laughs> the draft? <laughs> and look at that guy. Looks like a squid. <laughs> So they they have to draft their declaration of engagement. I guess that does make sense because they're both now high-ranking politi or not politicians, representatives of the Federation. Ambassador, when you are ready, I shall see you inside. Yes. God, I love the two of them. <laughs> it's just like a weird. Well, it's not. I guess it's not that weird because they both have. Saru was kind of meant to be like the Spock of the show, the science officer that doesn't really show many emotions. So obviously he would fit well with the Vulcan. But it's a match made in heaven. I'm combing through sensor data for any signs of Molenwalk's ship. That is the top priority from an operational perspective. Crew cohesion is the top priority as well, and uh, captain's orders. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He's going to really love working with Tilly. She's so happy go lucky and she's so polar opposite of him, so personal. Everybody loves her. Then there's him who's stoic and closed off. <laughs> Active duty roster introductions, 1100 hours, schedule five minutes with each of them. Really? He's just going to chill here and he's, he's going to make everybody come to him? Five minutes is not really. Enough time to get to know some, but I guess he said he read their file. But that's what, how many, like, how big is the crew of Discovery? Like, 300? I mean, that's. I mean, you can't tell me Captain Burnham knows everybody that well. Quick, no one's looking. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, maybe there's some things we should talk about, too. They're breaking up. You can just tell. Six months apart. I mean, you could at least try for a year long distance before you uh, break up, but I get the feeling that's what Gray's going to tell her. This is a cool looking effect. That was pretty cool. All right, Hugh, the vessel, what do you got? Just tell us the next, just give us the next piece of the puzzle. 
It's good to meet you, Janal. I love what they've done with the uniform. It's a little formal, though. I don't. <laughs> so if he was last alive, did they say 800 years ago? So what? He, the, the last uniforms he would have seen were 3,200, 2,400... So book like Picard season three. Now those uniforms are better, my dude. Sorry, especially those sick ass away team jackets from season three. <laughs> I hit it in the canyons, not too far from here. Eight hundred years ago. Oh, don't you worry, professional associate. It'll still be there. Besides, I can't tell you how much I miss the feeling of a nice long walk. We don't have time. It'll be fine. Pretty convenient that where they're doing this is just in walking distance of where he's hidden the the piece of the map. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, it's just, it's a little bit more contrived that he just has, they have to walk there instead of being able to just beam there and leave. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll buy it. We have all heard what's happening with the brain. They're growing increasingly dangerous as the war. No fucking way. That's what aliens from Lonely Among Us. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that TNG season one episode. Where they're in, they and that other species are like eating each other, or they're eating the other species. <laughs> That's so good. There's a whole bunch of sick guys looking aliens here. I love seeing alien delegates in the Federation. I love just the politics of Star Trek. The revision has been adopted. Thank you. Let's take a short recess. So, she's obviously the representative for Navarre. She's president of Navarre. Is Saru the representative for his homeworld? These are all just Federation representatives from different Federation planets. <laughs> all right, come on. That was a little. That was a little excessive. You could have just walked up some stairs. <laughs> they love using these, showing off this. Fancy quick transporter effect they got going in every instance they can. The fact that President Serena voted with you makes well, it she very... did not vote with me. She voted according to her own values and against uh -oh. the Federation. Well, her then... assistant is afraid that their relationship's going to compromise her uh, reputation. He's going to say break up with her. Yeah, but he's going behind her back. She's going to fucking hate that. And he's going to get. His ass handed to him by her. Just you wait. I'm not sure I'm clear on your point. My point is that President Serena's betrothal to someone from another world brings with it many complications. This dude really is suggesting that they break up. Ignore him, Saru, and go tell her what he just said. And she'll be like, fuck him. I'll do what I want. <laughs> Were you with him when he found the progenitor's technology? You ask a lot of questions. How about we just enjoy the walk? Smell the air. We don't have time to smell the air. Okay? This is not a very uh, convincing alien planet. It looks like some quarry in, I'm assuming, Vancouver, somewhere in Canada. That's where they usually film these shows. <laughs> it's like when they, uh, in TNG, when they would go to Northern California to shoot an episode out in the woods. <laughs> these answers you want, if I give them to you, they might cost you your life. Sure, it's worth it. It's worth. It's the lives of every humanoid being in the galaxy at stake. Yeah, she's obviously going to risk her life for it. So these are the many outweigh the needs of a few of the few big time in this case. Janal. Beyond anything we'd ever seen. One of our group tried to activate it. He was killed. I mean, he's. I suppose he's lucky that. He did kill everybody with it. <laughs> I'm so curious what this technology is going to look like. Like, is it's probably going to be like this really underwhelming little like pad or something. Just enter. A, what do you want to create? And there it is, like scribble knots or something. <laughs> the Dominion War was raging. Everyone saw an enemy in everyone else. Ah. And we knew that technology could be used for great destruction. So it was like a covert op during the Dominion War to find this technology. I mean, it's better that Starfleet has it than anybody else. I mean, and this guy, Janal, dealt with Starfleet and knew Starfleet well. So if anything, I mean, come on. 
I mean, this was a Starfleet operation, or at least part of it, like somewhat Starfleet, if they were trying to find this technology. So they should have ideally destroyed it. If the Dominion got a hold of it, then they would have been screwed. In 20 words or less, tell me something about yourself I couldn't read in your file. I'm a real shiphead. Love the crossfield. But something about the curves of a 23rd century constitution class just gets me. I agree with you, Reese. Except I don't like the discoveries. The crossfield class, that ship, that ship sucks. But the constitution class? The refit, though. That's the real. That's where it's at. <laughs> Saurians reproduce asexually, but we oh. do not meet our progeny. Linus is a Saurian? <laughs> I hear they make great brandy. That, if you're not careful, can make you go blind. What the hell are you drinking? Uh, pretty sure it's the rest of that Saurian brandy we picked up on Thesis. My God, man. Are you trying to go blind? Last time I did this, they gave me chips. <laughs> Send Commander Awashkunin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tilly's pissed. Honestly, I'm surprised how much of a dick he's being. I thought he was going to take a little bit of a turn there with when he took this position. I thought maybe he'd be a little bit more of a, uh, you know, up his own ass. <laughs> you said there was something that you wanted to talk to me about? Things seem different between us. All of us just not the same. It's only been six months, Gray. Come on. Don't you be dumping a deer already. Like, I don't even know what their history is, so maybe I shouldn't be saying that. Maybe there's justification for this. <laughs> I'm just pulling this out of my ass. We literally used to be connected, and now I'm following my path here, and you're following yours. So Adira was hosting the symbiote that's, n that's now being hosted by Gray. Is that what I'm getting? So that, yeah, that makes things a little more personal. But Adira wouldn't still have the symbiote's memories, right? Because she's not a trill. Or would she? Or it's the symbiote that keeps the memories. The host, I guess the host dies for the symbiote to then transfer a body. So it's not like the body goes on after the symbiote leaves and has the memories of the symbiote. Are we saying we're breaking up? I feel, I feel bad even though I don't know them, but... Adira seems like a cool character. But I feel like I would appreciate both these characters more if I knew their backstory. Which is my fault. That I don't. We created the clues so that no one could reach the end unless they followed the full path. <sighs> we wanted the power to be found. But only by a worthy seeker. Oh, fuck off. Give me a fucking break. Only the worthy who follow the path or deserve the technology. Just tell them where they effing the clue is. Get this contrived crap out of here. Just tell them, please. I don't need any of this nonsense that they just pack in, the writers pack in to, to stuff the episode and, the, and the, the plot line. And her pointing it out that the path that they could just circumvent this doesn't make it better. We might have company soon. How close are we? Right around this corner. This reminds me a bit of uh, the Forge from Enterprise when Archer and Paul had to cross the, uh, the the Forge, the Vulcan Desert. I guess that was, yeah, that was an arc of a few episodes, right? This when they were hunting down the the Cyrenites after they bombed the uh, Earth Embassy. God, I love Enterprise. <laughs> I feel like I reference it so often. What the hell is this? Scales control the way light refracts. Mm-hmm. An organic being that can cloak, huh? I guess that's kind of like a chameleon. It's sort of like a next-level chameleon, so I'll buy that. What are those things it's shooting? They're like little, sp like, spears? Is it, like, creating those, or is it, like, throwing them? Go burn him. He's distracting. This is a crazy fucking beast they got here. <laughs> I mean, this thing runs wild on Trill. I mean, fuck living here. 
Look at that. <laughs> Oh, took an arrow to the knee. Seriously though, how the hell is it creating those things? They must have found that poem on their grave. I think I finally figured it out. As long as it's mission critical, use as many words as you'd like. <laughs> nice. Rainer got all of a sudden perked up. Oh, something I actually care about. <laughs> Come on. If it can create life, then in theory, it might even be possible to reanimate dead organisms. No. Nope. Sounds like this is very dangerous. Yeah, get long. this shit out of here. This needs to be destroyed. It's insane how dangerous this could be. It has a lot of great potential for good, but the the potential for bad is way too dangerous. You got to get it out of here. Bury it as soon as you find it. Destroy it. Okay, what? Captain Burnham, she sees something in you, but for the life of me, I have no idea what it is. Trying to hide how hard that is by being a giant... <laughs> oh, that's funny words. Ran out of words. I think he can fill in the blank, though. Yeah, he's being a giant. Stick any noun in there you want. He's being it. Tilly will figure you out. It is a very busy time for you. And of course, there is my new position. A public declaration may bring undue pressure. She's seeing right through this. She knows right immediately that her fucking assistant talked to him. She's not buying for a second. Say, Sarota, listen to that prick. He doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> he advised me not to announce. I took that into account and decided otherwise. Oh. So now he turns to you. He's yeah. quite clear that it would not... Behind your back, Trina, fire him. Devon. Duvin. Duvin. Yeah, don't listen to him. Make your own choices. She seems like a very competent leader, so you should listen to her, Saru. It is unclear to me what would have given you the impression that I'm in need of a caretaker. Excuse me, President Trina. President Rillick is ready for you. You fucked up, Saru. I mean, you meant well. But you fucked up. They better not break up now. Don't don't be like Gray and Adira. You two are too good together. I don't, that better not happen. For the sake of my ability to watch this show. <laughs> hey, over there. Those aren't rocks. Eggs. All right. If they're nesting here, then you're totally screwed. You're never gonna be able to get around that. Just have Discovery uh, blast them from the sky. <laughs> Fry up their eggs. Delicious. And then you get the clue and go. I got an idea. Basic xenoanthropology. Show respect to the one you're studying. Show respect? How the hell are you do that? Pick up one of its eggs and throw it at it. <laughs> Yeah, just walk up to it very slowly, like like Chris Pratt in Jurassic World. Tame, tame it. <laughs> so they, they mentioned talking with him before, but I didn't even pick that up. But so he's a telepath. I thought he was a human. Obviously not. What's what species is book? Then he's not a betazoid, right? Because he doesn't have like a weird thing on his head. And now they're, they're cool. I mean, really? Oh, yeah, just... Why don't you just say you need to get the clue and leave? Instead, they say, hey, we're, we mean you no harm, and then leave. You could have just said, hey, we just need to get past here for two seconds. We won't touch your eggs and get the clue. I had to know what you do when you encountered a life form vastly different than your own. Would you just see an enemy? Give me a fucking break. So this was just part of the test... You know how humans in Starfleet deal with 
with people that are different from them. They are diplomatic. You should know that. It's so st you, you, I'm sure you saw Starfleet do it 800 years ago. And the carving on the rock face. I believe you'd call that a red herring. Mm. So he just gave them the piece after that. He just had the piece sitting under a rock in the middle of some random gulch here. When they went to the last planet, there were these freaking balls flying around, zapping them. There was this riddle. It was all this complicated shit. <laughs> they just scanned this, like, scan for this, this weird thing. It, it was so much more complicated. I guess here they are. Hugh is hosting uh, somebody else's mind, so maybe it, is, it isn't quite so easy, but come on. I don't know. This episode is, there's quite a few contrivances, than more contrivances than normal, I feel. Or I'm just detecting them now for some reason. All right, Saru. Time to apologize. Make up with Trina because she's awesome. <laughs> you can't afford to lose her. And your job would be too awkward. I apologize. I accept. God, she's awesome. <laughs> Conflict is a natural part of any relationship, and not to be feared. It is a natural part of political life as well. She's so wise. But yeah, so de declaring it is going to piss people off, but yeah, you're right, like she's saying, if they hit it and it came out, it was leaked, and that would make things way worse, so bite the bullet and announce it. Honestly, Saru, just listen to Trina on everything from here on out. She clearly knows what she's doing. Janal feels deep gratitude for the extra moments of life you have given him. Nice job, Hugh. You did it. Hugh did it. <laughs> Hugh did this. Hugh did this. I am glad you found what you needed, Captain. So am I. There's something funny to me that they still just have normal zippers on the uniforms. How do those things work? Because they don't like set coordinates or anything. They just tap it and they go wherever. Is it, is it like wired to their thoughts somehow or something? Or it's like, I was going to say maybe it's voice activated, but they normally they just tap it and they go wherever they want. So I don't know how that works. Frankie, pouring uh, green, what looks like, 32nd century Topo Chico. <laughs> All right, it's time for the Rainer Tilly discussion. Where they awaken, or they open each other's eyes. In my experience, sir, it helps if the crew believes you actually care about them. Mm. I mean, that, yeah. Every experience I've ever seen. I mean, how could that not be the case? You f want to follow somebody that you think. It, you respect and that they respect you back. Otherwise, then why would you follow their orders? Why would you want to, you know, give your life for them? Rainer. Analyzing them is not the same as connecting with them or showing them respect. That's right. All you have to do is just be a little bit kinder. He must have... It'd be really interesting to learn his history because obviously he must have had a really tough time of it if he's so hard edged you know but he also does joke around and stuff so it's not like he's totally devoid of any personality how's that even possible how does that work how do I begin to explain any of that doesn't mean it's unknowable right this is a schlocktastic conversation this is like Picard season one or two dialogue. <laughs> Time is something that you wish you could reverse. The things you see and the scars left on your soul. We wish we could backtrack them all it's... into the infinite. But I'm not sure I'm okay with that. Yeah, I get that. This scene is totally. Why is this? Why are they even having this conversation? Just cut. They could have just cut this scene out. 
What is it even doing for this story here? Maybe by the end of the journey, we will find the answers we need. Both of us. So that was just supposed to highlight the fact that Burnham is also kind of lost. I mean, she, that's, she's always been that way. That's just her character. She doesn't know her place. It seems like she has kind of found it, though, now that she's the captain. And they're in the future, away from all the mistakes she made in the 23rd century. Three to go. I don't really understand, like, when they put that together, what is it going to... Is it going to create, like, a hologram for them or something? Like, how does that... How is that a map? This is very Jerry Goldsmith sounding, this music, which, of course, I approve of. Anytime they reference Goldsmith, I I am happy to hear it. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Star Trek. Like the past couple of years, they've like, this the composition game for the music has just been on point. The fuck was that? Oh, Maul. Mall. Yeah. How the hell did they get to Trill and nobody noticed? Like Discovery didn't detect their ship or anything. So obviously they're going to be able to track Discovery wherever they go next. Yeah, but if they jump to some other side of the freaking galaxy, then how, did, how are Maul and Locke possibly going to catch up to them in time? Okay, that was... Season 5, Episode 3 of Discovery. Uh, an interesting episode. A lot of... Like I mentioned, I found myself whining about the contrivances more than usual. <laughs> but uh, they were really like... I think I noticed it particularly here because we have such big stakes. We have the all, almost all life in the galaxy at stake. And we're getting stuff like... You have to follow the path and prove your worth. And, just when, and then he just gives them the piece at the end. For the for the map. I mean, that is just such nonsense. It's so, I get it. Writers have to do stuff to stretch it out and make it so there's, like, stuff happens. But when it's so obvious like that, that they're just puffing it full of nonsense to just fill time, then it's like, okay, come on. Um, but as usual, the interesting stuff in this episode is definitely the character work. The stuff with Adira and Grey, like I said, don't know those characters, so the fact that they broke up doesn't really mean anything to me. I'm sorry to say that. Um, but the other couple, obviously Trina and Saru, um, there's, they have such a great dynamic. And, you know, Saru's like a new politician. She's a very experienced leader. And, they, you know, she obviously knows what he's talking about. And even when he tries to help her, she's like, no, 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 let me deal with this. I got this. I know what I'm doing. And it's just a really cool dynamic. And I just love Trina and Saru so much. Um, and they're announcing their engagement. Uh, which is great. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the repercussions of that, um, if there will be any going forward. Um, and other, the other character, interesting character exploration was Rainer, who I was surprised how dickish he was. I thought, like I said, I thought he was going to be a bit more open, given that he isn't, you know, he got demoted. He's in a spot where he should be very grateful to Burnham and, and be a bit nicer. He's not. He's even more of a dick than he was before. And I don't know what his deal is. Maybe we'll get some of his backstory in the coming episodes. But uh, yeah, I don't know what is, what's with him. Um, I just felt like it was a bit of a 180 with him. But I guess at the end, with you know, that was kind of resolved already with Tilly at the end. Um, but it was interesting. So uh, we'll see uh, where this uh, goes. The plot, again, not... I mean, we're going to a planet I don't know of Um in the next episode, so I'm not particularly, you know, over the moon about what's happening, and we're just getting the pieces of the map. If, if we're on pace, we're going to get the, all the pieces by episode, like, six? So what are we going to do for the rest of the season? There's something, you know, we're going to have a, something to happen where uh, they're not going to find the technology. It was all a big misleading thing, this whole quest that they're on. Or they're going to have, like, a boss battle with uh, with something, with a, with one of the uh, uh, one of the progenitors. It would be cool if they actually met a progenitor, but I, obviously they're all dead. Um, maybe, the, maybe we'll get like another message like Picard and them found in the chase. Um, but I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, another 
perfectly entertaining episode, despite my complaining, but I complain about everything if I find reason to. It doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. But let me know what you thought of the episode. As usual, get the conversation going. Did you enjoy it? Um, obviously, what, by the time we're recording this, every episode is out, uh, but I haven't seen any spoilers for season five. I, I'm not that you know engaged with this show that I, that I follow people's reviews and stuff. I just watch it when I get around to it. But yeah, let, I would just as always know what you think. So did you enjoy this episode? Did this episode intrigue you for what was going forward? What was coming, rather, going forward? Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, you know what to do, and uh, I will see you in the next video.